Dear students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University. Today I am discussing with you topic micturition. Micturition is another word for urine formation and urine giving out. Before we go into detail, you are already aware of kidney functioning, filtration, reabsorption, secretion, processing of filtrate and formation of urine. You are also aware of regulation of kidney functioning. Now, we will try to see how this urine is finally given out by the body. My dear students, you may be wondering that urine is stored in the urinary bladder and you give it out when you want. You get the feeling that I must go to urinal now and you give out urine. What is the mechanism? How do we store it? And how do we give it out? I am sure a question must be coming in your mind that why it is not coming out all the time? Because urine is formed all the time by the kidney, drop by drop, and then it comes through ureter and is stored in urinary bladder. Then and the question which might occur in your mind that how it remains stored and why it doesn't remain stored for all the time and why we have to uh, urinate and if we don't do that then automatically a desire comes and we do it. Definitely there is some special mechanism to handle this. To store the urine is one mechanism, to throw it out from the body is another mechanism and this is a complex mechanism which we call micturition reflex. Before I explain to you the micturition reflex, let me also draw your attention to other kinds of reflexes which you have in your body. Uh, my dear students, you have three important reflexes in your body. One is of course micturition reflex, other is defecation reflex and third one is swallowing reflex. When you eat food, you put in the mouth, you masticate. Now you swallow it, so it goes into your elementary canal finally. Suppose you are not able to swallow, the food will remain in the mouth. So this reflex is also very complex and very important. Defecation reflex to give out or defecate or giving out matter from the rectum, that is defecation. Now, we eat food, it is digested and whatever food is left after digestion absorption is over, that is your fecal matter collecting in the rectum and this is happening all the time. But all the time we are not defecating. When reflex comes, we go to washroom and defecate once a day or twice a day. Again there is a reflex. If that reflex was not there, the moment the fecal matter is formed, it will drop out. Then third one is micturition reflex, which controls urine in the urinary bladder till the time you want to urinate. Try to appreciate and understand how important these reflexes are. Suppose we did not have this reflex, then whenever urine is formed, it will come out all the time it is coming out. You must have seen some people moving with a bottle connected to urinary bladder and urine is collected there because their reflex has gone. We have to be careful in keeping our reflexes compact and intact. So after understanding the reflexes and how important they are, now let us understand today how the micturition reflex happens in our body and how our body handles it for our benefit. We know that urine is stored in urinary bladder. There are two kidneys. From both the kidneys, ureters come out, two ureters, and these ureters end on to the urinary bladder and urine is stored there drop by drop, bit by bit. Now, voluntary signals 
from CNS are going to create or start the micturition reflex. These signals are initiated by stretching of urinary bladder. Let me explain these points in little detail. When urine is getting stored in urinary bladder drop by drop, the amount of urine will increase in terms of volume in the bladder. And when the volume has increased considerably, then the stretching receptors present in urinary bladder internal wall are stretched or understand this way that when more urine is stored then there is expansion in the size of urinary bladder. So, it's, it will stretch and become bigger in size, it will expand in size. Now, when it increases in size then stretch receptors are stimulated which will send signal to CNS central nervous system and central nervous system will send signal for micturition reflex which we are going to understand little later. Before this one more point to explain how urinary bladder is increasing in size because we are filling more and more urine into this. There is syncytium in the urinary bladder internal wall, syncytium of six muscles you can see on the side diagram they are arranged overlapping to each other. So, when there is a stretch it will increase a bit then second membrane will come into picture the third muscle layer then fourth and they will come into picture one by one to allow urinary bladder to increase in size otherwise they remain in sensation one above the other. So, these muscles will help in increase in the size of urinary bladder. This is one point. Second point is that because of stretching or increase in the size the stretch receptors are stimulated and they send this message to central nervous system. What message? That stretching of urinary bladder has taken place because a lot of urine is collected now this should be thrown. So, central nervous system will initiate the reflex which is micturition reflex and that is what we are going to understand in this session. The stretch receptors which are present on wall of urinary bladder, they send signals to central nervous system and now central nervous system will send motor messages. Why motor messages? Because stimulus is taken, message is sent by sensory nerve and response or the reply comes through motor nerve that is the role of nervous system functioning. So, motor message will come down and it will do two things. First, it will initiate contraction of a smooth muscles of urinary bladder. If there is contraction then urine is pulled down or pushed down that is one thing. It is pushed down but it should come out. So, there are two sphincters internal sphincter and external sphincter in urethra. Urethra is the opening through which urine will be thrown out. It has a sphincter. Now, those sphincter should also open. So, same motor message will do another thing relaxation of urethral sphincter. So, urine can be released. I would like to repeat these two actions. When motor message comes from central nervous system, on one hand it will do contraction of urinary bladder to push the urine down, on other hand it will relax the sphincters of urethral opening to allow urine to be released. Unless both the systems, both the mechanisms are working together or simultaneously, the urine cannot be thrown out. So, try to appreciate and understand how complex the mechanism is just to urinate or give out the urine and that is partly in your control. Even if you have a strong desire to urinate you can control for some time till you reach the washroom. But let me also tell you that there is a limit to which urinary bladder will store urine. If you do not go to washroom to urinate then a stage will come when you this reflex will not work 
and urine will start coming out on its own and that point should never come. You must know that you should have fixed time for urination as far as possible like when you get up in the morning, before going to school, during lunch break of the school, after coming back from school, in the evening, before going to bed or after dinner, you can fix some timings so that your reflex is not put to stress. If you take care of your micturition reflex, this reflex will help you till one is very old also. In the diagram you can see when there is a stretch in the urinary bladder, the sensory stimulus goes towards the nervous system and motor message comes and that is working on contraction of urinary bladder as well as on the sphincter to release the urine. From micturition I have come to the word micturition reflex. Why do we call micturition reflex for release of urine? Because micturition is just release of urine and neural mechanism involved is a reflex and that is why we call it micturition reflex. An adult gives out around 1 to 1.5 liters of urine per day. Urine which is light yellow colored watery fluid, why I am saying light yellow color? If it is dark yellow color, then it will mean some different condition or if it is reddish, it will mean another metabolic condition. So, in the normal case, it should be light yellowish colored watery fluid and it is slightly acidic. Hence, its pH is 6, you know pH neutral is 7. So, slightly acidic, so pH is around 6 and it has very characteristic odor and it is an indication of kidney status also, the kidney functioning also. We give out around 25 to 30 grams of urea per day and we have to throw urea out, otherwise it will do some damage in our body. It is a tool of a clinical diagnosis, also metabolic disorders and malfunctioning of kidney. Kidney health is very important because urine is an indicator of your internal condition, internal physiology. Suppose one finds glucose in the urine, it is direct indication of the fact that the person is diabetic, there is more sugar in the blood. Similarly, if one finds ketone bodies in the urine, that is ketone urea and the dangerous situation in the body. Coming to urea, we know the main function of kidney in our body is throw urea out. We are ureotelic. We give out urea as our excretory product. Suppose our urine has less urea and our blood test shows more urea in the blood, then this person is having uremia. That means kidney is not functioning normally and kidney is not able to throw urea and it is getting collected in the blood and that is a very serious malfunction of the kidney. Proteins which we should not filter. I did tell you while discussing kidney structure and function that in the glomerulus in the renal capsule, when blood is filtered, the pore size of blood capillaries will not allow proteins to pass through. So, it is plasma minus protein which is filtered and that is a filtrate and RBCs, WBCs, platelets are also not filtered, protein is also not filtered. Now, if you find protein in the urine, that means protein is filtered, that means glomerular functioning is not proper. So, this is how urine is an indicator to show how our body is functioning inside. Sometimes blood comes in the urine, this will indicate another malfunction inside the body. So, urine is very important indicator and kidney functioning is also very important. So, in this session, we have learned how important the micturition reflex is and how we can take care of keeping our micturition reflex healthy and how it is important for our physiological excretory system and how urine works as an indicator of internal conditions of the body. With this, we come to the end of this session. Thank you. Thank you.